So uh, I've already shot all that other video and I'm gonna start it with this one because I wanna make it kind of clear. In this video, I take you for a walk around Apple Park as seen from pedestrian. I'm not taking you for a tour inside it and I'm actually kind of doing this for a reason because if you're not on the inside, this is how you're gonna actually experience this building and this whole complex. On the inside, it's probably one of the coolest places in the world. And on the outside, there's definitely some cool stuff, but you don't get to see the crown jewels. So I kind of wanted to illustrate that beginning so you're not clicking this video thinking it's a tour of all this really cool architecture, because it's not. And a major criticism this building had was kind of the point that I bring up was that it's a big giant void in the center of town and on the outside, you don't really get to see it. You still get to see some neat stuff though. And I figure if you can never make it out to Cupertino, you can at least see it um, from this point of view. So this is in Cupertino, California. It's late April, 2023. Uh, I actually want to make a point to show you something at the beginning of the video. I'm uh, less than a mile away from uh, the Apple Park, but this is uh, Stevens Creek Boulevard. Now, right behind me was a shopping mall called the Valco Mall, which closed several years ago. And I was told it was a dead mall, uh, like even back in the 2000s. Any people lived here, they said there wasn't much going on, but now it's just a plot of land. And I want to show you this plot of land. Uh, I don't know, remember how big it is. I will look at actually, I will actually calculate it and put it on the screen. This is some of the most valuable land in the world. This is in a city with a severe housing crisis. This is in a city where less than like a half mile that way, you have a major employer. You know, you have Apple computer. You actually have Apple computers surrounded all over the place. And yet this is what we're doing with this piece of land. And I'm not singling out the city of Cupertino or Apple. I think this is prevalent all over California. It's prevalent in my hometown of Riverside, um, where you have places that should be developed into urban developments, and yet they're empty fields. So I want to show you a quick, uh, a quick view so you can kind of get a look at how big this is. And I'm even going to show you a walking by time lapse. And all that land, and it's doing nothing. And from what I understand, everyone was fighting it. So if you were to do something there, you're probably going to have neighborhood people show up and say how it's going to ruin the neighborhood. Um, but you have nothing. This is not producing wealth. This is producing wealth. This is not. And this is one of the wealthiest areas in the country. I figured if you go at a rate of like 50 units per acre, well, I'll be able to show you. Huh, thank you. See me recording, I have to honk their horn. Um, but you even have this transit. And from what I understand, there's like six per hour, seven per hour. It might even be like one every six minutes. So I kind of want to let you guys know that before the, the uh, walking tour gets started, that this is not an up close into the Apple Park that's only available to approved, you know, employees and other approved people. This video, you can actually get to see it, what it's like from the outside looking in. And it may not be what you expect. Uh, I've heard a lot of people actually would come out here because they really wanted to see this amazing piece of architecture. Then you don't get to see it. And that's not saying the architecture is not amazing. It's just, you don't get to enjoy it. So anyone, uh, everyone, hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's a cool video. I needed something for April. And I actually like it. So enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome to the April video. I'm up in Cupertino, California, and today we're gonna go walk around the Apple Park. This is the new spaceship building, and I'm just a few blocks away from it, so you can check it out. Um, on a lot of my walk around videos, I don't give commentary, I just let you see it. So this one I'm gonna give some commentary because there's a lot of cool things. You know, uh, Apple's a, a many things company, and one of the things they do really cool is they do really cool design work. And there's a lot of neat design stuff at this building that is like super cool, super hip. I've walked, I've walked by it a few times before, but you don't really get to see it. And uh, it's kind of a shame. Uh, and I wish, I mean, you do if you're here, but I wish there was more of it. Like the iPhone's really cool. The iPhone's sold all over the world. You get to see it. And you know, same with the Mac computers. Um, but with the stuff they designed here, not so much. It's just here. So I figured 
I'd show it to you and I'd kind of give it a think because overall I think it's a pretty cool building but there, there are some things I'm not a fan of um, and I will make a point to show them to you so we're just gonna kind of see what it's all around so I'll turn the camera around you'll still hear me and we're just kind of gonna go So there's a hotel up to the right. Now, the first thing I'm gonna get at is, isn't the building itself, but it's surrounding the building, is really not pedestrian friendly. Uh, this would be a place, I mean, there are thousands of people who work in this building, and there are appropriate places for tens of thousands of housing units in this area if your uh, NIMBYs didn't get to govern them. So you would definitely think there would be more going on. So like over here, and I'll show this again at a later time, this was the uh, location of Valco Mall. I believe this is 17 acres, and there's nothing there. A 17 acre plot of land, nothing there, and you have one of the largest uh, companies in the whole world just a few blocks this way. But, uh, as you kind of see, the pedestrian experience, this the All right, so the first little challenge is gonna be to cross here. You got cars coming at near freeway speeds. And uh, this is just not super pleasant. I mean, this sign actually threw me off right here. No pedestrians, bicycle, no motor-driven cycles. Like, no pedestrians. There's a sidewalk here, but okay. And the reason I point this out as being important is that there's clearly is like a bike lane here, but there really is also, you know, a fairly urban neighborhood. So a major appeal of the town is that there are urban neighborhoods over this way. There are many. So you can walk to work. Even though these are some of the highest paid people in California, it's still a very, uh, it's fairly pedestrian culture. But the infrastructure for pedestrians, I mean, would you want to do this every day? So you drive to work, even though you don't even live half a mile away. You know, get to cross a big street freeway. Now this at least does feel safer because you have the rail on the left, but still very loud. And, you know, it's weird because they'll talk about how big cities are very loud places. Well, we don't have big city density here, but we have a lot of noise. A hell of a lot of noise. So, I'll cut ahead to where we get closer to the Apple Park in a minute. Now right here is pretty dangerous. You see the pedestrian walking and these cars are going quick and they're going blind turning right onto the freeway. It's just, uh, you know, I'm an advocate of, you know, walking. And when you see a lot of compounding things where it's one little danger after another little danger after another little danger after something else that's really unpleasant, it kind of kills the whole desire to do that. I mean. I genuinely think Northern California and the greater San Jose area geographically is one of the most beautiful places in the world. Like when you see what they do with this area to make it nice, they make it incredibly nice. And we, you know, you really shouldn't tolerate this idea Wait. that the actual infrastructure makes it very dangerous and very unpleasant and overly loud 
Uh, this should be nicer than anywhere in Europe. You know, I watch uh, not just bikes and they show how the Dutch make uh, this amazing infrastructure. Now the Netherlands, geographically, is probably one of the crappiest countries in the world. It's cold, the weather's bad, the land is bad, but they went and made really great infrastructure and design to make it probably one of the best countries to hang out in in the world. I've never been there, so I can't say for sure, but everything I see, the infrastructure, it just looks great. And here they took this crappy land and made something really nice out of it. Like, I love that mentality. And here we took this amazing land and we didn't. Oh, pardon me. So, as I said, this isn't a review all just on what Apple did. But this is a review, not even a review, this is just kind of like a tour, what to expect. Like if you're gonna like move here, like what is this actually like? Because there's a lot of really cool pockets of cool. And when I get to the actual Apple Park, I'm gonna point out some things that I think are just amazing and I wish the whole town looked like that. Uh, so you see the cyclist, like it's 75 degrees today, it's beautiful weather. There should be tons of cyclists. This should be the best place to ride a bike in the whole world. And you should see just hundreds of, I mean, it's, it's beautiful here. I mean, you have this gorgeous, these gorgeous trees and this gorgeous weather. And yet you've got to endure all these loud cars that are not safe. And you got to endure them in such a way where it's designed to be very hostile to pedestrians. Okay, so here we got some more uh, apartments. These are much closer to the actual campus. I can tell it's not a far walk. Um, and I say, most of the time the weather's great. You know, this is, uh, this is a highly sought after area. Now, if you had to look at these apartments right here, they're pretty nice. And uh, for those of you in the Midwest who do not believe it, these are probably $5,000 per month apartments. The costs of everything up here are just incredible. Now, granted, you're only going to live there if you work at Apple. You're not going to live there if you work anywhere else, pretty much. I would, I, I would think it would be very strange for someone to live there. So, this I'm going to show you a little secret clip. We have little bits. Now, the thing about this Apple Park, it's mostly hidden. See how quiet it gets all of a sudden? I mean, if this, if this area is quiet, it's nice. The trees are beautiful. Everything's like, this, there's so much to like about this that it's really the exception that's not nice, but it's everywhere. All right, so here we go again. Now, I should, I should state my biases. I, I've been a everyday Mac user for almost 25 years and I got my first Mac as a little kid uh, probably close to 35 years ago so I'm definitely biased I like the company I like their products so I'm not if, if, you, if I sound negative about something I'm sound negative from someone who basically refuses to buy something other than an Apple product so this isn't like you know me coming in saying oh I hate that company they're so bad their computers are so expensive no not in the slightest. I actually like the company. Okay, so here we have Employee Park. I think this is a good little tie. I believe it's either a Bentley or a Rolls Royce right in front of me. We'll see if I get to cross before he does. I probably do. Look at me. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Now there's some uh, just regular businesses off to the left. I, there's a mod pizza in there that we had dinner at. It was, you know, it's good. Okay, this is the first thing I want to show you. This bus stop right here. I think is one of the coolest bus stops ever. I mean, this just, it's like, it's an Apple bus stop. 
Isn't that cool? I'll show you some other views, some other ones. Uh, I wish every bus stop in Cupertino looked like this. Like, think how hip this is. This is a super cool thing. Get the whole VTA system right here. It's pretty neat. I like it. You know, I, I like this idea of cities using design stuff to brand like that. And we'll get more views of cool stuff like that. Because to me, it's like, that's, a, that's an iPhone as a bus stop. Like some industrial designer went and made that and made it look really cool. And I wish they all looked like that because in the rest of the town, they're just normal bus stops. And it's kind of cool when, you know, everything kind of works together. But uh, as you can see, we're walking right next to campus. This is all you see. And uh, I don't like that because you can make this gem of architecture, then you seal it off from the public. And I understand Apple's a secretive company and they've got really important stuff that, you know, they don't want people peering in at. But at the same time, you make this showcase and then you hide it. Like, why? Why hide it? You know, we should, we should enjoy it. You know, I've only been to New York City one time, and what I thought was so cool was that you could like walk right up to the building, this big important building for some financial institution. You can walk right up to it and check it out. And yeah, you can't go inside, but you can at least like, you get a feeling like, oh yeah, like you get to see it, you get to experience it. With this, not so much. And uh, I understand the, you know, like I'm not complaining about these, these rows of trees. I think these rows of trees are great. I think these are beautiful, like this was well designed, but at the same time, it's like, it, it, it's like this, this membrane you can't go through and it's huge. I believe it's 170 acres. So in the center of town, you get this 100, 170 acre box that you, you have to go around when it's got really bitchin' architecture on the inside that you should get to go through. And I understand they're a private business. I'm not saying like legally or ethically or whatever. I'm just saying if you're having this, this showcase, like let's share it. Like let's let, let this, this, something that this town really should be proud of. You know, it's a Californian. I'm proud of the tech industry. You know, I'm proud these people came here and uh, started a company that became all this and employed my family members and, you know, did so well. Like, I think it's great. You know, I know people, a lot of people who invested in Apple when they didn't have a lot of money. Here, I'll let you read that for a second or two. So, I will say, like, it's, it's mixed feelings. Because I love this landscape architecture. Like, I love it. I legitimately love it. Like, I'm convinced we need much more of this in California. Like, I, it disappoints me that Riverside doesn't look like this, because it absolutely could. And even a lot of the rest of the Bay Area, you know, it could really look like this. But here's kind of more what I'm getting at. You have a lot of, like, there's some multifamily homes, like, cool, there's a lot of single family homes. But you, to have this monster of an employer, I don't know how many people work here. I would not be surprised if it's 10,000. I, I legitimately would not be surprised if it's 10,000 people work at this Apple Park. And you know what, I, I, I'm so thankful that those people came to California, packed up their lives, came here to do all this cool stuff. I'm not getting at that. But wouldn't you have, you know, something across the street that would be more urban? And I understand these neighborhoods are here first, you can't just like kick these people out. But you would think they would, because I'm actually going to point back to the to the uh, Valco Mall spot, well, that should be urban. And uh, so it's got this really imposing gate, which uh, I get it, you know, no crap from me. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, who gets to hang out here? You don't get to, see, at least you get to see the, I mean, it'd be cool if you at least got to see the building. You know? Modern architecture has its place. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I actually, I really do like the building. Everything I've seen of it, I really do like it. But it's not something you really get to go and enjoy. Now I'm deliberately walking this long path because it's, uh, 
there is, I want you to see that this isn't porous. It's just the big uh, thing. I'll let you read that. All right. But uh, I'll just do this as a time lapse now. Now, I broke the time lapse to show you something. First, walking through that is so pleasant. You hear these birds chirping and there's all these plants, it's so nice. And then you have this loud traffic off to the left of you. Like when there, the periods there's no cars, it's like you're walking through a park. It really is cool, I like that. Um, you know, you have to have cars, but it's like, it's what, now see these two homes right here? These are brand new, these are just built. Um, and I know this is a product of zoning law, but this would be a place where you really want your high density housing. The reason why is you're literally across the street from this massive employer. You would think there would be, you know, th that these, these, these homes are millions of dollars each. I, I, I won't knock look them up on Zillow, but I would not be surprised if these little homes you're looking at are two and a half million dollars each. The land is very expensive. And to build just regular houses, to me, is kind of strange because that expensive land should justify building high-density housing, especially when you are right next door to a, just a monster employer. So I'll tilt it back so you do get to see my face a little bit. You know, people are going to watch us. You got to know the guy's making it. Uh, so you would think that... And the reality is I know, I know what the problem is, it's zoning laws. Uh, this area is not zoned for high density housing, but you have this extreme concentration of an employer right next door. So to me, it kind of does justify that. Uh, from what I understand in the San Jose area, like 90% of the land is, that you can build housing on is R1, so single family housing. and. Uh, I think at a different point in time, that made a lot of sense. But today, uh, not so much. You have this really bad housing crisis here. And you have, I mean, there are engineers here who make $90,000 a year. And that's not a lot for an engineer up in this area. You, you could barely afford an apartment. Like, you know, that's the kind of job if you had anywhere else in America, you could like, it's a, you could, we could do, live a middle-class lifestyle with one income for a whole family. And here, that job isn't. Now, I'm not saying they don't pay well enough here, because I imagine the people, the engineers at Apple make, especially the ones I've known, make much, much more than that, you know. They way more than double that. So, let's get back to the, the bus stop. I think this is so cool. I mean, there's personality to this. Yeah, it's, you can say, yeah, it's modern architecture, it's whatever, but I like it. I legitimately like it. And actually, I'm going to look and see if there's solar panels up on the top. I won't know until I get home and look at it, but you tell me. I don't think so, because it kind of looks translucent from the inside. But this is neat. Like, I like the idea Little LED lights there so you can see what you're doing. Uh, bench doesn't look very comfortable. Let's try it out. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a bench. But it's that's kind of cool. I, I like the attention to detail and the fact that it's a bus stop. Something people normally don't care about. Yet it's kind of given the Apple treatment. And I wish like they all were. Like the whole line. It would just be cool. I understand like you know, the transit agency doesn't have the budget for that. But uh, someone next door absolutely does. It's not their responsibility to do the transit in the city, but I think there, there's a, yeah, check out this tree. So one thing I noticed just on the various walks here is how manicured all the trees are. I like this right here. Let's see if you can see the sign. I don't think it shows. Pine cones overhead, proceed with caution. 
like I said, the trees, I, I, the tree life, I give a 10 out of 10 to. There's so much, so many cool trees in this area. And we'll go back. Well, we're gonna support our League of American Cyclists, bicycle friendly community. And uh, there's some, this isn't protected bike lane, but it is a bike lane, it is green. It's better than what most places have, but I really think this could be cool. I think this could be much better. Well, I'm digging all this plant life. It looks so nice. See, there's a lot of little things like this. I have no idea what this is, but look at the design. Someone went and like designed and machined that to some really high level of tolerance. And I'm not even entirely sure what it is. That's all backlit, but there's an under big underground parking there. I think there's like parking for like 6,000 cars. I think someone said. But like, look at this, this security booth. Isn't that cool? I'm pretty sure that's for the, to get in the gate. Like, check that out. That is so neat. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect that. You would just expect it to be some commodity item sold from some company that makes them like that but it's not it's cool like I, I i like the attention to detail oh you know like this thing right here this light you can get the security camera looking at me like how cool is that you know a regular light would have done just fine but the fact they went with some really cool, hip, Apple design light, I think is just so neat. Now, here's the actual building itself. This is one of the few places you can see it, and it's backlit. And I apologize for that, but you can see the monumental size of the building. And this is one of the few places you can even see it at. Here we have another one of these Little uh, security capsules. Like, how cool is that? It's got that brushed aluminum look. Like, it's an Apple building. It's probably the smallest Apple building you can find. Let's take another closer look. So I'm here on a Sunday. I figured there's probably not gonna get me in any trouble. I don't wanna trespass on their property because uh, people can turn into not nice and I don't want them to be not nice. Even though they should be like coming out here and saying, oh, you got a camera, let's go take a look. We'll give you a tour. We'll give you the whole grand tour so you can put it on your YouTube video and everyone watch it. Yeah, just remember that. And I understand there's a lot of secret stuff that goes on here, but it's just kind of a, it's kind of a shame to have this cool multi-billion dollar building and completely hidden from the public. And uh, I understand you can't let just people go into your property, but you could design things to be embraced by the outside a little bit more. Because like a lot of the other Apple buildings look like this. And yeah, you can't go inside it, but you can at least kind of take it in. You know, you could, you could, it's, it's, a, it's a point of run. That tree almost felt fake. It's so nicely trimmed. See, like everything here is just so nicely trimmed. And like the groundskeepers are doing an excellent job. I mean, you don't really hear much about them, but the groundskeepers really make this just a nice place. A nice place that you really can't go into, but it's still a nice place. Wait. Now, because this is a Saturday, you're not really going to see it. Uh, during the work week, there are a bunch of these luxury motor coach buses. Like, they're not city buses, they're big giant, like, uh, you know, the touring buses. And they pick people up all over the Bay Area and they drop them off inside here. So, 
you know, at 7, 45 in the morning when I'm out there with my nephew waiting for his school bus, we see them go by. And there's a lot of them. <clears throat> I do like the park like atmosphere. Like, I don't want to say like this, this, I don't want this, this video to sound like I'm pessimistic or I'm not liking, you know, all this work they've done. Because there's, there's a lot to enjoy. This, na this natural stuff is really nice. So here's an Apple store, the visitor center. And uh, I'm not going to go in, at least today. But it's a pretty neat building. I think it's just a big Apple store, though. As far as like a visitor center, I don't know what they sell. Yeah, so for the, the park-like atmosphere, 10 out of 10. They can't control the cars, but uh, it's, it's so pleasant to walk through. They really embrace the California nature. Oh, check it out, Rivian. Electric pickup truck. Uh, it's when I tell my friends uh, they don't have a whole lot of EVs in this, a lot of the country, but we do out here. Oh, check it out, that is so cool. Yeah, I don't want to bug people getting them on camera. But I'll, I'll show you some more close-ups of the building. But I believe it's just an Apple store. But I do want to show you this building. This, is, I think, is really cool. Oh, there's no one there. I'm going to have it all to myself. I believe... I believe... This is the Steve Jobs Theater, I think. But I think it's further back. It's just really neat. And you kind of get the vibe of a college campus. See, it's really cool. And when there's no cars, it's quite pleasant. And in the summer, these will all be grown in. But I do think as far as modern architecture goes, that building really does a good job. That's a cool one. It's the visitor center. And uh, maybe I'll go show that another one. Steve Jobs Theater. So like when they do uh, product announcements, they do it in there. But yeah, so most of this is like a nature walk with me rambling. And uh, this is not everything. There's actually quite a bit of Apple buildings to the west of this that you can walk through. Now you can't like walk up to the building, but you know, there's a sidewalk and you can actually see it. It's more like this. And it's, it's they're, to me, they're 1980s cutting edge. This is 20 teens cutting edge. Those are 1980s cutting edge, but uh, in this town, I imagine it's kind of a unique place because it really is a town where this one company has this huge gravity. And they provide amazing jobs. I mean, the people who work here make a ton of money. And uh, they should. They're, they're working for a trillion dollar company. I'm glad that they're well paid. I'm glad that they came to California. I'm glad they came and built this. I kind of wish the whole town looked like this. You know, uh, I first started coming up to the Bay Area back in 2008, kind of regularly. And there's like, you know, the old, I was going to Los Gatos. But one thing that struck out to me is I was expecting it to be everything to be super futuristic and just super, because you know, there's so much money up here. And in some ways there are. Like there's a lot of things where I saw it happen here first and then you'd see it happen elsewhere. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's, there's just tens of thousands of startups out here. And, uh, like, I think the first time I ever saw a QR code was up here. The first time I ever saw Google Glass was up here. And one thing I really 
I, I like about this this whole area is this extreme optimism over technology you know so much of the, like you see on reddit and you see on basically anywhere everyone's like oh this technology is the worst you know this is all so bad and if you bring up something oh you just get like the most pessimistic attitude in the world and then here you'll see people like give it a try and they pull it off and i think there's really something remarkable about that you know there, there was no iphone or android until california companies made them i mean that's the absolute truth they happened in california with california companies and if people everywhere thought that was like the biggest waste of time and energy effort it'll never work and yet it did and we have iphones and androids we have both i mean i know this is a video about apple but let's you know their biggest competitor is just in the next town over like you would think it'd be in another state or another country and it's not it's here all that's happens here so i really like the optimism about it but yeah i did, I, I like this so much i like the park grounds i just wish they were more porous and it, i mean even if the city got involved and said hey let's make parks like this because the parks in cupertino i think are actually quite nice but here we have more apple buildings like i said these are these are nice buildings of their day and they still are nice I and mean, they're, they're nice and modern you know and the important thing is good work it's in but you get to see it you get to you get to experience it up close it's not something that you know so here's the only real view actually this is even it this is another one this is tantu 9. but that's kind of what the spaceship looks like so before i came up here Tantau Drive Bay. Before I came up here, I was expecting to really see the, the the new spaceship building. And the one thing that really got me was that you cannot see it from the outside. It's a very secretive thing. And I thought I thought to myself, oh, that's gonna be front and center. Every time you go through around town, you can't miss it. It's just the big giant thing. And it's, you know, it's this you know symbol of prosperity and you know even corporate might but you know if that's your town it's kind of an important thing considering how many places in america are currently going through decay to see this big rich buildup but you don't you don't get to see it it's hidden and uh you know i, I if you clicked on this video thinking i was going to take you around the campus up close well i didn't because you're not allowed to and i kind of wanted to make that point you know, you can walk through a university and you can see the university, but this is, it's private. And I, like I say, it, it, I feel conflicted because there's, there's a reasoning for it. And there's a very much a justified reasoning for it. But at the same time, it's, you want to see it. You want to experience it. So if you're coming to the area and you're saying, oh, you're a big Apple fan. And you want to just see that, that building. Well, this is basically it. You get cars speeding like that, you know. Pedestrian infrastructure when you have loud cars going by is not much pedestrian infrastructure, but it's I told you know some of they do their best Because and I say the landscaping is just 10 out of 10 I cannot say if you are a gardener or a groundskeeper a landscape architect who worked on this project or works here Your work is stellar Your work is literally world-class Now, the reason I'm not super cutting up this video, I'm not making it longer than average, is because I really want you to see what this is all like in scale. I've been walking for quite some time now, uh, pro at least half an hour. When you walk half an hour all around this building, that just shows you it's a very big area. This is not a small building. This is not a small complex. This is a very, very large area. And yet it's completely sealed off and you know for the function of a company I understand that's a good thing and for the employees who get to work there it's a great thing but there's just something about that that just doesn't sit right with me that uh, you would have you would seal off the 
the main thing. They see multiple people are walking this freeway bridge pretty much. So if you can see, that's where we crossed earlier. That's the area that we, we covered. It's a pretty big area. Hello. That is the area. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of other, uh, there's a lot of other Apple buildings all over the place. And I'm not gonna show them other than once I just saw in passing, just cause I don't wanna walk for now and for another hour and a half. And my batteries are getting low. But I, I do really like, there's, like I said, there's, there's so much I like about all this. And then yet there's things that I just, I find just so problematic. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. I didn't want to get them in the video, but like the tree work, every, every tree you see is just, it's so well taken care of. It's so manicured. It's almost like Disneyland. Disney does a really good job with that as well. So anyway, folks, kind of a long rambly one. When I thought about it, I needed it in my April video. I didn't know if I wanted to make this a no talking video or a commentary video, but I figured I'd do something different and kind of throw in my commentary. I didn't grow up in Cupertino. I've only been coming up here regularly for about two years. I have family who live up here. So the first time I came to Cupertino specifically was like 2017 that I didn't come up for a long time. Uh, but I'm here a lot now, and I say there is a lot to really take in. Uh, I hope you see this is not a negative video, because I thought there was so much positive, but at the same time, like, there, there's so much you'd, if you were visiting the area you'd want to see and be happy about, then it's kind of a letdown, you know? It's, uh, I thought the, uh, the use of uh, hiding everything and having 170 acres that's just a big void in the center of town. I don't like that. What I did like though, I think this is the best use of modern architecture probably anywhere in the world. Uh, I like the bus stops. I wish they all looked like that in Cupertino. They, the regular ones are just regular city bus stops. Um, you would think that an employer this big, there would be like a tram system that goes through town. I mean, because there, there are thousands, if not 10,000 people who work in that building. So you would definitely think that they would be uh, getting them in there. I think the grounds are just amazing. If you like landscape architecture, I think there's just so much and it's, it's to me, it's what California, especially Northern California should look like, you know, and a lot of it doesn't. So to see it done right, and here's even more, yeah, let me get it out of the way. So, you know, to see it done right like this, I think is just so special. So anyway, if you like that, I post weird stuff uh, every month, art stuff, kettlebell stuff, whatever's on my mind. The internet is forever. We'll have this forever. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Riley O'Neill, and I will see you next month.